Hello. Today, we're going to talk about how to start your research data collection. Most people submit a survey and they don't really think about how they're going to enter that data prior to submitting that survey. So they get all the information back. Now they start to process it and they're not quite sure how to analyze or set up the spreadsheet or software package in a way that makes sense for the data they've collected. I recommend that you always set up your survey or data collection instrument in a way that best allows you to input that data later. And the very first component after you've created your survey is to set up a code book. Not only will this help you identify some potential problems with your survey, if there are some, it will also allow you to have multiple people enter the, the data into your analysis software if you need to because they'll, everyone will be using the same key or what we call a grade book or a coding book. In this case, it's a coding sheet because it's a single page. So the first thing we need to do is identify whatever our data entry tool is. And in this case, it's a survey. In this survey, we've asked a number of questions about general health. Each one of these questions is going to give us a different type of data. Gender is always a nominal data type because there is no rank between male and female. It's just a categorical group. We're going to arbitrarily assign a number to this so that the so that the spreadsheet or the SPSS software or SAS software knows exactly what female and male are. Because they run on numbers, we need to assign one of those a number. And we'll get back to that in a minute. With age, we're going to assign age is a scale or ratio type. This question, the way we're asking age, is going to give you ratio data, a number from 0 to 114 or however old someone is that answers this survey. Ethnicity is also nominal. It's nominal because there is no order to Caucasian or African descent or Asian or Hispanic or Pacific Islander. Now there's multiple categories here, so we won't be able to do the same analysis that we would on a two item nominal case, but we'll come back to that when we talk about analysis. We've also, if you can notice, yes, height in inches is also scale or ratio. Weight is also going to be scale because we're asking for weight in pounds. Blood pressure is going to be scale. But it's interesting, in this case, we're going to have two variables. We're going to have the systolic, which is our first number, and we're going to have diastolic, which is our bottom number. And the reason we're going to separate those is so that the computer can do analysis on systolic values and diastolic values, if we put them in with the little slash in between, all of the analysis will think we're either dividing those two numbers or that we are putting in a string variable, a qualitative data set, and that is not what we want. We want to be able to, to analyze those blood pressure numbers as numbers. So we're going to have to split that in our analysis and have both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Systolic is our first number, our diastolic blood pressure is our second number. Seven, how would you describe your general health, has a categorical data, but there is some order to this. So this is ordinal data, and we'll come back and assign these numbers. And also, interesting piece on number eight, each one of these is going to be a nominal data point because they're just checking yes they they do this or no they don't and that makes them nominal but instead of having one variable for all of question eight we actually have seven variables frequently we'll call this eight a b c d e f and g as we enter them into our computer for analysis but first we need to code them as nominal now we need to go back and tell people who are entering this information, if they get a survey and there's an X marked in the female, what do they put in the computer? So with female, we are going to make them one. And with male, we will make them two. So every time the computer sees a one in the variable of gender, it will think female. Every time it sees a two, it will have a label of male. Ratio, because they're scale of ratio numbers, they're gonna simply enter the number that is in that space as a number. For nominal, we have to code these as well. So we're going to put Caucasian as 1, 
We're gonna put African descent as two, Asian as three, Hispanic as four, Pacific Islander as five, and other as six. There is a problem with the way we've asked this question. We're not going to deal with the sociology of the, the issue right now, but it is possible to, to be Hispanic or non-Hispanic and another variable here or dual race or ethnicity and all sorts of other things. So these aren't mutually exclusive categories. And when we ask questions, we need to make sure that, that our respondents have mutually exclusive answers so that they never have a question about what the response for them is on a variable. In this case, we do. And so if I was doing this as a, as a social survey, I would have to rewrite this portion of the question um, to allow for many other potential answers. But for this purpose of showing you how to code a, a coding sheet, we're going to move on. So in nominal, each one of the times the computer sees one of these numbers, it will label this piece. Height, weight, and blood pressure are all going to also be ratio numbers, and you'll enter the number that's directly measured there. Ordinal, we need to also code, and we'll do that the similar way to ethnicity. However, this time we need to make sure that they're in order because it is possible to, to do some other analysis there. In this case, the difference between this question seven, which is ordinal, we have to keep the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. With ethnicity and nominal data, we could assign any of these numbers one, two, three, four. We could change them up. Uh, we could we could make Asian one and Pacific Islander two and Caucasian three, African descent five, and it wouldn't matter. But it, it does in an ordinal data set. Finally, in eight, each one of these, we're just going to put a key here that says uh, checked equals one. I like to use when there's an, a null variable, when we, an, when we ask questions here, that are either do or don't, I like to say unchecked equals zero. Some people would put one or two. I like to put zero just because if we wanted to know how many of those there were, that they said yes. If our checked number was one, then we can do a simple addition of the variables and it would tell us how many of those they selected because it would give us the number one, two, three. If they were one and two and we added those variables up, then we'd have a problem with um, identifying the fact that the unchecked ones are worth to the computer twice as much as the checked variable. That may be a little more information than you need, but I always like to do, do what we call a null variable or when when they don't answer a question as unchecked or zero. With that, you set up your code so that when you start to receive your data back from your data sheet, everyone knows what a four means on ethnicity and a three means on number seven and a one means for what we would call a one, two, three. If there was a one there, then we'd know that that person drank four glasses of water a day. And everyone who enters the data would have that same supply.